Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a hospital pharmacist and today I'll be going over interviews whether it be for pharmacy school interviews, residency interviews, or even job interviews. So you can skip around to different parts, whatever is relevant to you. First, let's just go over general rules of how you should answer questions in all aspects of interviews. So if you haven't heard about it before, the STAR method is the best. So you should be using the STAR method when answering situational questions just so that you can be succinct and to the point. STAR is an acronym. S stands for situation, T is task, A is action, and R is result. So it's pretty self-explanatory when you're asked situational questions like, oh, tell me about a time you had to work with someone difficult, use the STAR method, or tell me about a time where a doctor didn't agree with your plan, those type of questions. So that's where the STAR method comes in. So S, um, you know, you explain the situation. T, what was the task at hand? What did you have to do? Um, A, action, what did you do? And then R is uh, results, so what happened at the result of your action? Any clinical answer you give, make sure you know 100% of that topic because it's free game for you know the interviewers to ask you to elaborate on the topic, ask you more follow-up questions about it. So if you're not 110% confident in that topic, don't even bring it up. Let's say in a situation, your example is that you did a drug topic on um, hypothyroidism or whatever. That opens the floodgates to them just quizzing you and asking you about treatments, uh, contraindications for this medication, etc. Third step is prepping yourself for success. So that circles back to the STAR method. So my biggest recommendation is to start an Excel sheet and have different columns for the STAR acronym and think of different situations where you know you made a good intervention or um, you made an impact on a program or some kind of hospital or facility or even for school, you know, you um, had a situation where you were put in a difficult place and how you resolved it, etc. Just think of any type of typical interview question and try to create a bank on your Excel of all these situations you've been in. So because a common occurrence is that, let's say you have this one situation in mind and you're ready to give this explanation to answer one of the questions and all of a sudden you realize you already used that situation in another question, so now you're all out of ideas, like you're all out of examples. So you don't want that to happen. So the biggest way to prep for an interview is just think of all the different scenarios, the situations you've been in, how you're able to resolve it, what actions you took, so that you can have multiple examples for one question, so that you know if you accidentally use one example for another question, you won't run out of ideas. Okay, so now let's break down types of questions for different interviews. For pharmacy school, you better be able to answer these questions. Why pharmacy? And why you? If you're not able to answer the question, why pharmacy? I don't think you should be going to pharmacy school. My answer was in the form of a somewhat a story. So for me, I explained my personal story was that, you know, essentially as a child, um, I was daughter of Vietnamese immigrants who had struggled with English and you no know, reading English or medication bottles. So just growing up, I was their mini pharmacist. I would read the prescription bottles, help them with the instructions, help them with their OTC medications, making sure they're taking it appropriately. I was the one micromanaging them, you know, finish your antibiotics. Um, so that essentially planted the seed of the idea in my mind and essentially in college I want to explore this um, possible career so I joined the pre-pharmacy society just to get a more understanding. I volunteered at um, outpatient pharmacy at a hospital on my, camp on my campus and I also volunteered at a long-term care pharmacy nearby another facility. I was able to see firsthand how the pharmacist really made a big impact on this patient's lives and I wanted to be that person. Growing up, we were a low-income family so I knew that I always wanted to have a stable career and be able to provide for my family in the future and just in general create generational wealth. So with all these different experiences, it started to really solidify my love for this profession. 
in addition my major is biochemistry and I felt like over time I became more and more confident and I was really genuinely interested in the material and so it just solidified that okay maybe I do like this profession I'm capable of learning this material so that is essentially why I decided to go down this path of pharmacy. So that's just an example of how I answered that question. Your answer is gonna to be totally different, but you know that's just the gist of how I answer the questions. Everyone's gonna have a different response and that's okay. As long as it's true to you and you do truly want to become a pharmacist. Now for residency, you have to make sure you're able to answer these questions. Why residency? why you, and also be able to answer any clinical questions or topics that's on your resume. So like I said, I mentioned before, if you bring up a clinical topic, then it's fair game for them to ask you to elaborate. So skim through your resume, look through all the topic discussions you put it on there, all the presentations, research posters, you have to know those topics like you're an expert. A lot of residency interviews, they have this fun creative portions where they might have you prepare a PowerPoint ahead of time about yourself or about a topic. I've had a lot of interviews like that. Some interviews, they might have you um, pull a topic, random topic from a bowl and then be able to prep and prepare you know, um, a presentation on the spot. Things like that, that you have to be on your toes, show your personality. My biggest tip is that, you know, just try to, I know it's nerve wracking, but try to make it memorable and just show your personality. A lot of these creative portions of the residency interviews is just to see how you are as a person, um, your personality, and it's just to help them get an understanding, okay, will this person fit with, fit in with all the other possible residents or other candidates? Will this person you know, work well with the other pharmacists here? So don't sweat it if you're not able to do an amazing presentation, but you know, essentially just try to show good spirit, be happy, be memorable. Now for job interviews, you have to be able to elaborate on your job experiences. This is key, this is huge. So a lot of job interviews, that's the bread and butter. So explain yourself, you know, what you did and your past experience, work experiences. Um, you know, what kind of things did you do that help improve the department as a whole? Again, situation questions like, do you have to deal with a difficult doctor or difficult nurse or coworker? Those are pretty standard questions that will pop up in job interviews. And then also be able to answer the question, why you? And the why you question is going to be very important just because it's the pharmacy profession is a little bit competitive. So you have to be able to really sell yourself and your experiences. So if you're a new grad, um, obviously you won't have as much work experience. So you can bring up if you did any internships during pharmacy school, um, of course, your clinical rotations. If you did residency, that would help a lot. Also, if you had any administrative roles um, at your previous experiences, that would help a lot too. For me, I was very fortunate to have been hired on after my residency. So a lot of my experiences were you know, residency-based uh, rotations. And what's great about residency is that you know, a lot of facilities, they try to hire on the residents just because you know, they've trained you for a whole year. They'd rather hire you over some stranger they don't really know. So oftentimes I like to tell people when you get that residency, think of it as a one year long interview because it essentially is. Um, throughout the year, they're seeing can this or resident be able to keep up? Can they eventually get hired on and work here as well? So that is always in the back of their mind. So try not to burn any bridges, do your best and keep working hard. Now lastly, the questions at the end is also very important and something you shouldn't take for granted. A question that I love to ask and I use a lot during my interviews that you know, the interviewers seem to really appreciate was that, you know, what brings you here to this hospital and what are the reasons why you stay? You can get in a sense or idea of the interviewers. Try to detect some red flags. Like if they're not able to answer that question, something's wrong with the hospital. Do they actually like their job? Because you have to remember not only are they interviewing you, you're also interviewing them. This is the time to ask all the questions that you have. But keep in mind, ask only questions that are not 
already on their website. Otherwise, that's gonna look bad. For pharmacy school, the questions are a little bit different. So for me, I was more you know, concerned about you know being overworked and stressed as a pharmacy student. I know it's gonna be a very difficult four years. So a really good question is just, you know, what are some of the support systems on campus to provide students if they're having a difficult time in pharmacy school? Is there resources for pharmacy students if they're struggling in pharmacy school? How do you measure success in your pharmacy students? So that's a good question too. So interesting to see what the interviewers typically say for those. Because there's some people, you know, they can be book smart, but when it comes to applying it in real life, it's a different story. For residency, that's also a good question, asking the interviewers in residency interviews. What are some qualitative and quantitative ways you measure success in a pharmacy resident? If you're not asking any questions at all at the end of the interview, then that might be a red flag for whoever's interviewing you. Places expect you to ask questions, so have questions prepared. 